This video is to teach you how to add error bars on your Excel graph. I have used some data that I have generated for both time and distance, and I've now obtained my absolute measurement uncertainty for both of these quantities. You should have your table for the activity from the characteristics of carbon resistors. You should also have four columns that match mine, except yours will say um, essential difference, current, and then the absolute measurement uncertainty of the two. I'm also hoping that you have done the graph like I have. Here, I've made the Excel graph so that it shows up as it would normally do when it is generated. You'll see that it does not have a title and it does not have axes labels, and it also doesn't have some key features that will be required in a graph that has error bars that will allow you to analyze both the maximum and minimum gradient. So let's get started. When you click on your graph, um, you'll see the plus green button that appears. If you click on that, that will allow you to add various things. The first thing that I'm gonna teach you to do is actually to add the error bars. And when you go to the error bars, it automatically generates a set of error bars that looks like this, which if you look at it, um, would look like they're actually standard size error bars. What we really want to do is we want to actually go for more options. And there's a little arrow on the side that will allow you to choose more options. Once you do, it will then generate some general error bars and will have already highlighted the vertical option. As you can see here with the blue dots that are around the vertical error bars. Once they have appeared, we don't want a fixed value. In fact, we actually want a custom value, which is the last option down here. When you click on it, it will now appear with the button that says specify value. And we're going to do that right now. When you click specify value, it will ask for what positive value you would like to go above the error, uh, above the data point. And our positive error value vertically is going to be my distance um, measurements. So it's going to be these ones. And I've highlighted the whole column matching all of the data points that's available. And the negative values or the points that go down underneath uh, my data points, I'm also going to choose the vertical uh, variable, which is my distance uh, measurement, and that's the measurement uncertainty related with it. If I click OK, those error bars vertically are now in the size that is matching to these values. Now, just to show you how it can possibly change, um, if I now just go to the error value that I've just previously chosen and change this to a 6, um, that error bar on the graph has grown. So you can see that um, the error bars have reference to this particular column, and it's super useful when you actually have error bars that you have, um, or uncertainties that you want to demonstrate um, visually on a graph. Um, now we go to the horizontal error bars. So now you just have to click on the horizontal error bars. So now the horizontal ones are highlighted. And once you go down here, you want custom values and specify the values. And because we're doing, um, time. I've got my absolute measurement set to do for time, which is here. And my negative values also will be the same. And I want to click OK. And now my error bars are consistent with what I'm hoping to see um, with my actual um, calculations. Now that that's done, um, I'm going to teach you um, how to add some grid lines on the back of this um, and also to add some tick marks on the side, which will make it easier for you to read the graph when it's printed. If you go to um, the addition option and you go to axes, first of all, um, I'm going to choose more options. And when you choose more options, um, you'll see that there is a box now that's surrounded the horizontal axis here, um, none around the vertical one, but there's a little box here. Um, it's telling me that the major units going horizontally is going up at once and um, the minor units are going up in point twos. So I'm just going to drop that right down. So I'm actually going to change this to um, go up in every point fives and I would like for it to show me every point one of a difference. Now you don't see um, the point one difference come up, but that's because we haven't added the grid lines. But before we do that. Um, I'm just going to scroll down, go to tick marks because I really want to be able to see um, the ticks. Let me just close this access option so you can see the tick mark option. Um, 
I want to put the tick marks um, for the major axes um, on the outside, uh, inside, and then the minor ones on the outside. So now you can see the tiny, tiny little uh, slashes that matches every point one um, seconds um, as I want it down here. So the tick marks are important. It allows you to see um, on the axes what the numbers are. So now we're going to do the vertical axis. If you don't want to go and axis, um, access the section using the little green plus sign, you can also click on that particular area of the graph. And once you do, you can highlight that particular region and it comes up with format axes on the right here and you want to go to axes options. And well, now that you're there, you do the same thing. So here I'm going to look at my major and minor units going up vertically. Um, I think I can probably manage to go up um, in probably once. So I can go up every one centimetre. And for the minor axes, um, it comes out to be 0.2 automatically. Once again, can't see these um, changes that I've made. Uh, by the way, if you think that what you've chosen is not proper, you can always press the reset button, which is here. Um, if you close the axis options and now open the tick marks option, um, I can go inside for the major ones and then the outside ones for my minor ones. You can see that they've all kind of popped up here. The next thing I want to do is I want to format the grid lines um, in the actual graph. So that allows me to read off my axes um, when I calculate my minimum and maximum gradient. So to do that, um, you would go to the plus section, go to chart elements, and you wanna go to grid lines. See how it's already ticked because it's actually already chosen um, the primary major grid lines for both the horizontal and the vertical axis. What you can now do is choose the minor ones. By the way, if you mouse over it, the graph changes, so that helps. And I'm gonna tick both of these. So now it looks more like a conventional graph. Um, so those are, these are the things that you should edit on the actual graph itself in terms of the axes and the grid lines to help you to be able to use the graph um, readily. There are other things that you should add, which will include the axes titles, um, as well as the actual title of the chart, um, and you will need to edit these properly. So I hope you can do this by yourself, um, and if you need any help, please talk to your classroom teacher.